Good morning, everybody, uh, or afternoon, I should say. Uh, my name is Sean. Welcome to uh, Coldesi's, uh Tech Talk webinar on hooping bulky items. Um, as you can see, I've got in the background, I've got a jacket that uh, we've already hooped and sewed a design on. Um, I've got over here behind me, I've got a bag, uh, a drawstring bag, and I have a hat that we are going to go over with different ways of um, hooping um, the garments. Um, if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free, ask away. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, the other ones uh, will be answered by somebody sitting, uh, you know, offline, off to the side, answering through chat. So if your question doesn't get answered by myself, it will be answered. Um, over here, um, let's start with, uh, with hats. I get a lot of questions with, um, you know, customers wanting to sew a, uh, a son's name on the side of the hat, um, a number, or, or just simply just a design on the left side or right side of the hat. Um, I wouldn't try hooping the device or hooping the hat in a in a hoop due to the fact that you know no matter what hoop you're using when you're hooping what happens is you've got the bill in your way so you can't hoop all the way to the far right you pretty much limit your area towards the back of the uh, back of the cap and when you're back here you're no you're now no longer on the side of the cap you are three quarters of the way towards the back of the head so you're not really getting that centering of the design on that, uh, that panel here on the side. So what I usually tell customers is the best way is go ahead and just hoop your hat as normal like you normally would on the machine so that when you're sitting here um, and you want to sew a design on the side of the cap, basically just use your arrow keys and rotate the hat until your, your needle number one, your start point, is in the middle of that side panel. That's where your start point will be. So then you set your start point, trace your design right here, press start, it'll sew the design on the side of the cap. So if you buy a cap at the store that's got you know a TV logo on the front and you want to put your name and personalize it on the side or put a number, hoop the hat the way you normally would on the, on the machine. And then when you have it there, just rotate it to which, whichever side you're sewing on. That needle number one will be in the center on that one side of the panel and then set your start point, trace it, and then sew on the side of the cap. Does everybody understand that? Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions so far? Yes, um, to hoop the hat to do the puff. Same way, just hoop your hat normal, and when you put it on the machine, um, your, uh, your design usually, for example, when doing puff, which I have a puff design right here, I'll show you, we have the TB logo, which is a raised puff look, and basically what it will do first is it will do the dark blue, which is the outside backdrop. So when programming your design into the machine, um, you're going to incorporate a color stop so that the machine can stop uh, and allow you the time to, play, to place your foam down before you press start and actually tack the foam down. So when putting on the machine, you're going to hoop the hat as normal, uh, but on the machine, you'll incorporate a color stop. Does everybody know how to incorporate a color stop on the embroidery machine, on the Avance? All right, and just in case, I will go over it just to be sure. Um, when you're putting in your colors and you're doing your set color order, if you've got two colors in your design, which is, say, the light blue and the dark blue, and you want your puff to be laid down between the first color and the second color, what you're going to do, and I'll go ahead and zoom in so everybody can see. Make sure I don't unplug the camera. That would not be a good thing. All right, here we go. Everybody still with me? 
All right, on the control panel, as you can see, let me get so it's in focus. We've got two colors, which is color number one and color number two. Does everybody see that little blue uh, highlighter going back and forth? So our first color of our design is four, which will be the backdrop or the shadow of the design. Our next color is going to be two, which is what we're doing the puff with. So what we're going to do here is we want the machine to stop between colors one and color two. So on color number one is you're going to hit the, the, the button with the devil arrow sitting right here in the middle of the control panel. What that will do is it will add a red box. I don't know if you can see the red box, kind of like a dark square right now on camera. But it's a red box behind color number one. What that will indicate is the design will sew that color first, then stop. Allow you to lay down the foam, press start, it'll move over to color number two and finish your design out. So that's how you would incorporate a color stop on the embroidery machine when you are doing the puff designs. So, but when hooping for puff, just go ahead and hoop your, uh, your, your garment normal. There is no different when doing that. So now let's move to what size the best for the hat lettering. Um, for doing puff, I'd probably go do a good a two to um, a two and a quarter inch lettering size, depending on um, you know what you're trying to type. Majority of the time, when you do do puff designs, uh, your letters you want to be thick enough and wide enough for the satin stitch that it does able to show the puff. If you're doing small text, it's so small the puff doesn't have a chance to be able to puff out. So you definitely want your lettering to be you know a good one and a half to two and a quarter inches. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, you could do a manual color change, but doing it this way is a lot easier when adding the red box, the red square behind the, the, the colors. Now, when you're doing the back of the caps, um, you're not going to use the cap frame or the cap driver. Uh, the reason is there's no bill in the front for the band of the frame to go around. So what you'll have here is pretty much a very loose fabric that will uh, probably cause a lot of thread breaks and needle breaks. So the easiest way to do that is, uh, the best way that I find, um, there's two ways. I'll show you the way that, that I was taught um, many, many years ago. And I'm gonna move the camera a little bit right about there. There you go. Um, the way that I was taught, um, which I've been doing this since 91, so I'm kind of old school, kind of hard to change. Um, if you do have an all-in-one hooper, um, it does have an attachment to be able to do the back of the caps. So that's an easy way of doing it that way. Um, otherwise, the way I do it is find yourself a table uh, and then just go to the corner. We're going to go to the corner over here. And let me move these hoops out of the way. I'm going to place this over to the side. Can you zoom that in for me? Yeah. Right, the camera's moving by itself now. Sean's mental powers. Mental powers. All right, we're going to go right here in this corner. Okay. All right, so basically what I want to do, and the reason I use the corner of a table is because it allows the hat to hang down below and doesn't try to bunch it up. You try placing it on a flat table, you've got to bunch the hat down, and it's a little bit trickier to do it this way here with all the hat bunched up here rather than just placing it on a corner. You keep the hat in its, it's, in its original shape so that uh, you don't dis distort it. Next, depending on the size of the design, depends on if you're going to use the 90 centimeter or the 120 centimeter. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll grab the 90 centimeter hoop, uh, I'm sorry, the 120, and we'll loosen it up a little bit. You're going to place this right on the corner. We'll then uh, unsnap if it has a snap back or a Velcro, undo the back. You're going to place it over the hoop. And then grab our other in south side hoop. Try to keep the seam in the middle. Try to keep it level. And you can kind of measure it up with the sides of the, uh, the straight, uh, straight edges of the frame. We'll go ahead and, and do that and tighten the hoop up. Make sure we're in there nice and secure. And then there you've got your hooped hat. That's good. So it's nice and tight. Our seam in the middle is straight. 
will then be able to sew on the sides, sew on the back of it, whether you're doing an arc or you're doing a number. I find this way myself to be a lot easier um, to hoop the back of the cap. The one thing you do want to remember now, the hat is upside down. So when you're placing it on the machine, you will need to rotate your design 180 degrees so that it sews your design upside down. But when you take the hat off the hoop, it will be right side up. Good tip. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you're going to have to wear your hat upside down. <laughs> so hooping that way, uh, I find the best um, for hooping the back of the caps. Are there any questions so far on uh, the back side of the caps, how to hoop it? All right, good, good. All right. Let me go ahead and rearrange the camera so everybody can see me. Mark was in here. Uh, see, we got a question right here. It's, um, see, do you find you need to use stabilizer on the caps? Um, I usually always do um, at least one piece of tearaway backing. Um, as you can see with this, with this cap here, I mean, it's a nice, thick, sturdy material. Um, you know, I usually only use the backing to help stabilize uh, this fabric from being able to move inside the hoop. Um, but, you know, on, on thick material like this, it's not necessary. The front of the caps, most caps have this buckram inside, this white buckram right here. That also serves as a backing, so uh, you can use it with or without a backing. Um, me personally, I've always done it. I still use a one-piece tearaway backing. Um, and that's just so that when you hoop the garment, it holds the fabric stationary and gives it something to grab onto when starting to sew. All right. The next uh, object we have here is I have this drawstring. Uh, it's kind of like a drawstring sweatshirt bag. So you see it kind of took the front of a sweatshirt with the pocket, cut it off sewed pieces together and actually made a drawstring little cute little bag. We had done this uh, at our open house this past weekend. Um, these right here are spangles. This is done from our spangle, our pro spangle machine. Uh, Got to support our local team. And so the back of the, of the bag, um, and you can do this with either, you know, bags, duffel bags, suitcases, um, backpacks. Um, the biggest thing you want to remember is the opening in the front of the bag that you have to be able to sew. Because this opening goes around the neck of the embroidery machine, and with the garment hooped, you have to be able to make sure that this can move left or right, forward and backward, without being yanked out of the hoop. Um, you know, for example, if we're trying to sew here on this pocket, which is very small in the front, you can see it's got a very small opening on the side. You can get a hoop in here, but now your area right here is very limited to the size of the design that you can sew on because you've got to be able to fit this over the neck, still in the hoop, and have it move left or right without it popping out of the hoop. So I know everybody always says, you know, and we always say here, if you can hoop it, you can sew it, you still have some limitations on the, on the areas. For example, on pockets on shirts, same thing. You can hoop the pocket, but that pocket's got to be able to fit around the neck of the, uh, of the machine and it's got to be able to move left and right so that while it's sewing, it doesn't put too much strain in either rip the shirt or it rips the, uh, the shirt out of the hoop. So for something like this, um, you, you know, you've got two options. We can use a regular size hoop, which this is, I think, the uh, 15 centimeter hoop. Depends on what you're sewing. Um, if we look at the 12 by 12 size jacket back hat we have here, this is going to stretch it pretty much to the limit. This would be the largest one that you'd be able to fit in this bag. Now, in doing that, you're putting it to the max limit, so now you've got the hoop to the outside edges, and it's going to push this way. So while it, oops, so while it pushing out this way, you're stretching the opening area. So what I usually do is once I hoop a garment and I put it on the machine, just to make sure I've got enough sewing field, I will go ahead and use my arrow keys on the control panel and I will move my frame all the way to the left of the hoop and all the way to the right of the hoop to make sure it's not putting too much stress on the garment and it's not going to pull the, the, the garment off the hoop 
Because that's one, that's one thing you definitely don't want to do is start sewing and then all of a sudden have your shirt pop out of your hoop or have a bag pop out. The other thing that um, you also want to pay attention to is if you're sewing on, um, you know, like a, a suitcase, <clears throat> the suitcase most likely you can unzip it and then you've got it hanging down. Well, when you've got these arms putting too much stress, they tend to bend down. So for a suitcase or a duffel bag or a backpack that's got to be weighed down, you definitely want to put the table on the machine. And my table is not in here. It must be out in our training room because we do have a training today on the Avance. Um, so you want to put the table on. That'll help these arms ride nice and smooth on the table. And the other thing is maybe get like a chair or um, a bar stool or something and set in front of the machine to rest the, uh, the suitcase on, the duffel bag, because um, otherwise, even though you've got the table on, it's still going to put a lot of strain on here, and it's going to want to pull it this way off the machine. So you want to be able to support that weight and have it just basically sitting up here and not putting too much strain on the machine trying to sew, wanting to pull the, the garment off the hoop. So you can have like a table, a little bench, um, a workstation, put it in front, let your suitcase um, rest on there. Same thing if you're sewing on blankets or quilts. Those are very heavy. Those are very, very big and bulky. Put the table on and find some way to support um, the rest of the garment around uh, the machine so that it's not stressing and pulling too much. If you're pulling too much, your sew-out's not going to look very clean. So you want to give it some stability and have it to where it's just sitting up here and the rest is being supported back here, so you pretty much got nice and smooth movement up top. Otherwise, if it's heavy enough, it is pulling this way, stretching this, so that while the machine's trying to move one direction, the weight of the garment or the, the, the bag or the suitcase is pulling the other direction. It's going to make your sew-out look kind of funny and possibly might break some needles. So you do want to support it. Um, we've got customers that um, sew on um, uh, horse blankets. In her shop, her husband rigged up our ceiling up here. Uh, we've got the, you know, the tile, <clears throat> excuse me, ceiling. Her husband rigged up bungee cords, hung it from the ceiling, and then clipped them to her horse blanket around her machine to help stabilize it and keep it off the ground and to keep the weight from pulling down on the arms. That's one way. I had a customer whose husband um, built a rolling table that once she put her table on, this rolling cart out of wood, fit directly around the machine, around the table, and butt it right up. And it was a good, I think, two feet out that way and three, three and a half feet out towards her that would support the weight of her garment, um, of her quilts that she was sewing on. So, um, you know, there's different ideas, different techniques you can use, uh, but you definitely want to support your garments below the machine while sewing on them. Um, when sewing on suitcases or backpacks or, you know, thick, heavy material, um, there's several hoops you can use. You have obviously the hoops that come with the machine, which are, you know, the, the standard green size that has a, well, I'll show you on this one here. It has a thickness, uh, on, you know, on the hoop. So when you're hooping and you're squishing these two pieces together, your, your fabric comes in, through, and then up over. So what happens is, you've got a, a width of, you know, almost an inch thickness here that you're trying to squish into, say, a denim um, canvas material extremely hard sometimes to where this hoop is so loose, if you loosen it more, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to pop out. There's other hoops on the market. Um, one of the good ones that you can use is, uh, it's called the all-in-one, it's called the 7-in-1, and it's basically a clamping system. Um, you know, if you, if you purchase it, you tell them that you, you know, you're using it for the Avance machine and they'll get you the right, uh, right attachments, uh, but it snaps into here on your arms. Your arms might be a little bit wider out. And then basically you have a bottom piece that sits here and then you uh, lay sticky backing on the back of your, your hoop and then just basically lay your garment uh, on top of this and it, it adheres to the stickiness of the sticky backing and then you sew that way. So there's really no clamping part of it. There's no hooping part of that part. And it's uh, it's called um, a clamping system. Uh, not clamping system, I'm sorry, that's the other one we're gonna talk about. It is a seven in one uh, uh, hoop. 
Um, they're called Fast Frames. Um, I'm pretty sure it's fastframes.com. And uh, they've got different size hoops, different size uh, uh, for different machines. Just uh, go ahead and let them know what machine you have, and they'll get you the right equipment. Um, the other one that, that, that's out there is called a clamping system. And it, it plugs into your machine, plugs into your machine here. And it's more of a, like a clam. It sits up like this. You lay your garment on top, you put your backing, and then you pull the lever and it clamps down, clamping your, your garment nice and snug. The underside of both sides of the hoops is kind of like a rough, rigid material. Uh, it won't damage your material unless you're sewing on like, you know, ladies' blouses or, or you know, dry fit shirts. But if you're doing that, you're definitely going to use a regular hoop or you're going to use the 7-in-1. Uh, the clamping system is, is the same thing as you're not hooping with, um, you know, a, a, a hoop height. It clamps it down. It holds it nice and flat, so it's a lot easier. A lot of people use the clamping system um, when they're doing, like, dog collars, karate belts, because they're not trying to have a hoop where it's going this way, then up through the hoop, and then out. It's really hard to hoop that way. So you get the clamping system. It clamps it down, holds it nice and sturdy. They sew their names, uh, their sensei's names on there and uh, easier to do that way. Are there any questions so far on the types of hoops or uh, questions, uh, you know, things we've gone over so far on the bags or, or heavy material? All right. We're going to move over here to the jacket back. Um, on the jacket back, this is a denim jacket, so you can see it's a nice sturdy material. You can see the backing that we used, which is a heavy uh, cutaway. And you can see the, the, the area that I cut around on the back. I still leave about a, a half an inch to an inch around my sew out. The reason I do that is if you were to cut your design, your, your backing, just to the edge right here of your sew out, really nice and close, what happens is the front is going to try to um, go back to its original shape, original um, form, and it's going to go as far back until it meets the, the backing or the sew out. So then you get like a really rippled effect along the outside of your, your design. So I always try using, um, leaving about a half an inch to an inch of backing. And you can see over time, this does get very soft and uh, you know it doesn't abrasive so it doesn't ruin your you know rub against the skin but in something like this this is you would use um, we use the 12 by 12 hoop that comes with the Avance uh, to hoop this garment um, and what I would do so you don't get the hoop burn I'm not sure if anybody has seen the hoop burn before or know what a hoop burn is is basically when you have your hoop tightened a little bit too tight and then you're forcing the hoop down to grip the other hoop to hold your garment. And what happens is it's, it's basically rubbing the fibers of the, the, the garment down so that when you undo it, you get like a white burn where the hoop was laid in. You just take water or magic sizer or a smart sizer and just spray it, rub it out, and it goes away. But to prevent that, one way that you can do is loosen your hoop up pretty loose, hoop your garment, then tighten the hoop up. Therefore, you're not forcing the garment between two really snug pieces of, of um, plastic. It's more of a loose in there. And then when you tighten it, you're just clamping it down tighter. It'll hold it just as good, but you will stay away from the hoop burn. Uh, so we got a question here. What about magnetic hoops? Um, yes, magnetic hoops work excellent. Um, I have one here in my office that um, it's almost like the clamping system. Uh, except for, you know, the two individual pieces. The clamping system, it's all one big piece. Um, kind of reminds me of <laughs> the old headgear back in the 80s that kids used to wear when they had braces. It, it kind of looks something like that. It's just a big piece of uh, metal. Um, the magnetic hoops, it's just a regular hoop, uh, so to speak. For example, like this one here, just a regular hoop, but they don't fit inside each other. It just clamps to the edge. And it's, a, it's really a very strong magnet. Um, in fact, on the, on the hoop itself, it actually says to keep away from pacemakers. So um, I, would, I would recommend the magnetic hoops as well. 
Um, I would probably, in order, besides the Avance hoops, is um, I do like the magnetic hoops. Then I would go with the 7 and one uh, fast frames. And then I would probably do the clamping system. Uh, because, like, you know, the magnetic hoops work just as good as the clamping system. All right, and let's see. Uh, let's see, do you leave you leave for all your items? Use cutaway. Um, it, it just depends. Um, majority of the stuff that I do sew on, I use cutaway. Um, especially for, like, a dry fit shirt that I'm wearing now. Um, T-shirts, um, polos, golf shirts, stuff like that. I want to I use a thick backing because that'll help stabilize your garment in the hoop. If um, you know you use a tear away, when it's done, you're gonna tear it away. So what happens is your shirt all of a sudden becomes wrinkled because when you put a shirt in a hoop, you're, you're stretching it so that it's nice and tight. So when it sews, you get a clean sew out. But what happens is your shirt is, is hooped tight, but on the outside is still loose. So when you take that hoop out, the shirt's gonna try to go back to its original form, giving you kind of a rippled effect. So by having the, the, the strong backing, the cutaway, it gives it more stability and you don't get as much of that ripple effect. And then when you're done, you would just cut away close to your design rather than ripping it away. You get a, a more of a, a flush shirt. I mean, I've had this shirt for almost three years and, um, you know, wear it every week. I wash it and I know it's black, kind of hard to see, but you can see you get a little bit of a wrinkle effect, but just barely, but you can see where the backing is on the outside. It holds up really well. If you're doing a tear away, you're going to tear it. You're more of, of you know, more wrinkles are going to appear around your design. So I would definitely use a, a cutaway. Um, I would use rinse or, uh, the tear away on if you're doing like denim, um, canvas material, you know, real sturdy material that doesn't have any stretch. The other thing you want to do is when you're hooping the garment, only hoop it like on a t-shirt like I'm wearing or a dry fit, only hoop up and down. I would not stretch your garment left and right. Because then what happens is uh, the weave of your fabric starts getting wavy. So when you pull it out of the hoop, that waviness is going to try straightening up to a straight line. That's also going to give you wrinkles. So just do top to bottom and just barely enough to get the wrinkles out of the hoop. And you should be good. Um, how about sticky back? Yeah, sticky back works great. Um, like I said, for the 7-in-1 uh, the fast frames, um, I haven't really used it for the regular hoops or a mighty hoop or the clamping system um, it's really used for the 701 fast frames due to the fact that there's no two pieces to actually hold your garment your garment is actually held on by that sticky backing in the 701 fast frames uh, the mesh backing for polos dry fit shirts uh, that's a good question yes definitely definitely I recommend using the mesh uh, backing and I don't think I have any in here it is very scarce, but uh, what it is, it is a, uh, you know, like, like, like she said, it's a mesh backing that um, is very, whoops, I locked the, locked the door, is very soft. Um, that's a very heavy cutaway, but it's a very soft backing. Um, I would definitely, what I would do is like, if you have your shirt down and then you've got like, say, a a light cutaway and then put the the mesh backing on on the, the the hoop so while it's sewing your mesh backing is the last piece out here so when you're done you take it out you trim it up around the customer's garment you've actually got the mesh backing that is going to be against the customer's skin um, I would recommend using that also for babies baby onesies baby shirts toddlers because you don't want the harsh uh, cutaway backing or even a tear away to rub up against the skin because of uh, you could have some some babies with allergies, uh, sensitive skins, and you don't want it to irritate it. So I would use the mesh backing. Um, it, it's it's nice, it's uh, it's soft, and especially after you wash it one time, it's very soft against the skin, so it doesn't give you the uh, the the abrasive roughness of a cutaway. Uh, melt away, that is almost like. Um, Pretty much, it's almost like top solvy, uh, to where top solvy is a a like a uh, like wax paper, very soft wax paper with a gluey substance that when it you lay it on top of garments to help stabilize top stitches, um, you lay it or you hoop it with um, terry cloth towels that are very very coarse. 
you put that on top so that when you sew, it helps hold the stitches to the garment. And then when it's done, just rip away the excess, take a damp cloth, damp washcloth, damp on the, the stuff left, and it just disappears. But with the gluey substance it has in its in its fibers, it kind of helps hold your stitching down and, and holds everything together. Um, that is called rinse away or top solvy. The melt away would be the very very similar to the same thing um, for the back of the garments to where it, when it's done, um, you know, when you heat it up, it just melts away, but it kind of like glues your stitches to your backing so it helps stabilize it that way. Uh, let's see, how do you measure the size of the hoop? What is the type of hoops that the Avance uses? Ah, it's a good question. The, the, the way you measure it, um, our Avances, some of them are labeled, um, which we have labels here. You can see that's a 15. What that means is that's a 15 centimeter hoop. So the way you measure the 15 centimeter is it is from edge to edge. So with this one here, we've now got a 12 centimeter hoop, which is from edge to edge, to edge side to side. The uh, 15 centimeter is also 150 millimeters, or it is six inches. So that's several ways you can tell. Um, a good way is, is the, the hoops that come with the Avance is you get a, um, you get 190 centimeter hoop, which is roughly three and a half inches. This is good for, um, let me get in the camera here, cuffs, the size of shirts, um, the collars, back of hats, um, you know, small areas, uh, the tops of pockets, this is good for. Your next size you get with the Avance is the uh, 12 centimeter or the 120 or the five inch hoop, which is this one. This is the one that's mostly used for a lot of your left chest logos, because uh, most of your left chest logos are right around three inches. The next size that comes with the Avance is the 15 centimeter, and I'm just tightening up the hoops so they don't fall off, is the 15 centimeter, which is, like I said before, it's almost six inches. Next you get the 21 centimeter hoop, which is here. This is uh, good for um, center, center chest logos, baby onesies, um, toddler shirts, because it's a nice size. You get a lot of design in here. Our next size you get is you get the 12 by 12, or what is known as the 300 by 300 hoop size. And then all the hoops that I've sewn, which is the 90, uh, the 120, the 150, and uh, the 21 centimeter, and this 12 by 12, you get two of each of those hoops. So while one is sewing, you're hooping your next uh, garment, so it's uh, you know one to sew, one to go. The other hoop that you do get with the Avance is uh, one of the largest ones in the in the industry. It is a 21 inch by 14 inch sewing hoop. You only get one of these. These would be good for you know the horse blankets, the quilts, uh, terry cloth towels, banners. Um, you know if you're doing uh, patchwork, this hoop you just you just put this hoop on. You you know, do multiple copies of your patches. Take them out, cut them out. Now you've got you know 20 patches out of one hooping. So you get one of those, and you get two of the others. You get uh, two of the cap frames. Uh, so while one sewing, you've got one uh, that you're, you're ready to go. And those are the ones that come with the Avance. Um, see what size is a uh, hat hoop to design a pattern high width? Um, on the, on the, the cap frames that we have here for Avance, you can sew anywhere from, I've gotten up to three inches tall uh, to sew on a hat. The other thing you want to pay attention to is on your hats, it all depends on if it's constructional or unconstructional or how high your, uh, your, your, your cap is. If you've got a lower cap, your design style is going to be a lot smaller. You've got a higher one, you've got a higher chance of, uh, you've got a larger air sewing field. So for this cap here, you could probably get a good two and a half, two point six five inches tall. Um, the smaller ones you could sew on bucket caps, you could sew on visors, uh, but your sewing field will be a lot smaller. Uh, are there any questions so far of what we've gone over with uh, the different hoops, the hoop sizes, the different style hoops? Um, any questions anybody has?
I do appreciate everybody coming out uh, this morning of their busy schedule and, and, and you know, learning about, uh, you know, hooping devices and, and different ways to hoop with backings and whatnot. Um, all right, no more questions? All right, oh, here we go. We got one more. Let's see. Uh, you have sewn quilted bags and have trouble with the hoops holding. Um, the quilted bags, that's where you would probably want to go to either the, um, the Mighty Hoops um, would be a good one to go to for the quilted bags. Um, and if you go to MightyHoops.com, they got different sizes. They've got jacket backs, left chest ones, smaller ones, um, you know, full front uh, size hoops. Those are the ones I probably use for a quilting bag. The, and believe me, the magnet is extremely strong. It will definitely hold a quilting bag. Um, when I first saw one at a trade show, the demonstrator actually had um, a jacket, and he basically had the inside hoop on top, and then he just threw it on the floor, threw the top hoop on, and it just it clamped down and it held it. It's it's um, it's a pinch hazard. I will tell you that I've been pinched before when it when it clamps down and, and gets tight. So for uh, for your quilted bags, I would probably recommend doing a uh, mighty hoop. To get you more uh, more stability, because with the quilted bags, obviously, you know your bag's got to go up through the hoop and then out, so your your holding is not very snug. You've got to basically loosen your hoops all the way up, hoop it, tighten it, and then you know hope it does not pop out. Carhartt jackets, yes, um, those are really thick materials. The mighty hoops would be the best one for those. Um, you could try one of the you know, the green hoops. Um, but it's a thick material. I would stand there and watch it, um, you know, while it sews because you definitely do not want it to pop out when doing a Carhartt jacket. I would definitely recommend going to a Mighty Hoot for that one. All right, any more questions for the night, for the day? <laughs> Sorry, lost time. I, I do appreciate everybody coming out and uh, joining me today to go over uh, some of the hooping devices. Good questions. I appreciate the questions. We're here for you. Um, you know, we want to, you know, make you better at what you do and, and, you know, answer everything that we possibly can to help you out. Saves from putting in a support call and, and it gets us interactive this way because there's some questions you might ask that somebody else didn't know or didn't think of to ask and vice versa. So we're all out here to help everybody. And, and I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you. And hope everybody has a, a good Wednesday. And uh, we'll definitely see you uh, on the next time. And don't forget, this Friday is a, a tech talk um, that we do from 10 to 11, and it will be on the Sierra software. So feel free to, to log, you know, log on and, and sign up for that one. And uh, I'll be doing that one, so I'll see everybody on Friday. All right, everybody have a good day. We'll see you again.